This video is brought to you by patreon.com backslash sip the tally. Join the Patreon for exclusive vids, early release vids, on screen shout outs, access to members only giveaways, and added monthly tally points. Hop on over to patreon.com backslash sip to tally to see which one of the four tiers fits for you. Now let's get started. Welcome back to Sip to Tally Films. I'm your host, Coach Evans, and today. We're going to talk about the four things that came across my desk that I felt to be newsworthy for January 19th, 2020, I'm sorry, 2024. Happy Purple Friday. Got my purple jersey on, so happy Purple Friday to everybody out there that's supporting the Ravens flock that got their purple on today. Uh, I'll be looking at the pictures later on, you know, tag, not tagging, but liking and commenting about the different ones that I see. So, again, happy Purple Friday. So excited. Can't wait for tomorrow's game to see what we do versus the Houston Texans. But first thing I want to talk about is Patrick Queen. Patrick Queen sat down on the lounge, the lounge podcast and talked about some of the different things that had happened to him over the past couple of days. One being receiving uh, invitations to the Pro Bowl and being voted to the All-Pro team. Uh, let's take a look at what Patrick Queen had to say on the Lounge podcast about receiving those awards and accolades. Absolutely. Uh, you can kind of see it in the playoffs with the teams that lost, like people throwing the ball in the middle of the field, they just running it straight at them down their throat. Uh, so I think if you ain't got two people who can sit right there and just control both aspects of the game, it's going to be a long night for you. And I think that's one thing that me and Ro uh, kind of stopped the offense from doing is be able to run up the middle and then throw the ball in the middle of the field. So. Um, you know, it's still been throws here and there where it'll slip, and then you'll see, like, we'll come back and make the play later. So it's all about a learning process, a learning aspect to the game and stuff, and not letting somebody get you twice. Like, no guy get paid on the other side of the ball as well. Um, so it's, it's, it's honestly, honestly tough in today's game uh, with all the stuff that's going on on the offensive side of the ball to do what we do. But definitely think nowadays you've got to have two good inside linebackers that can control both aspects. First two days, I ain't gonna lie, it was just like mind blowing, honestly. Uh, Cause it's not as much as like, yes, I got this accolade, like like a trophy or something. It's more of like people around me notice, like people uh, from other teams, coaches from other teams, fans notice what I'm doing. So uh, that's the biggest part of it. But after after those two days, I was just like, okay, whatever, like let's go win <laughs> something. So, um, you know, it's definitely, it's, it's enjoyable, but at the same time, it's, uh, it's just another thing. Patrick also talked about knowing that the roster may be different next year. They also asked him about his contract, and he was saying, basically, we're just going to go out there and play ball. Uh, whatever happens, happens. Uh, we're going to go all in, you know, because the pieces they got on the team this year push all the chips in. And whatever happens with the contract in the offseason, it just happens. There's nothing he can really do about it now. The fifth-year option was declined. Uh, they paid Roe. Uh, I would like him to be here. You guys know that. So I just – Right now, I'm just going. Not even, I'm not even talking about it no more. Let's just stick with football and whatever happened with Patrick Queen's contract. It just happens. But let's move on to the second topic for today. All right, the second topic of today is Kimberly Martin, who's made a lot of comments in the past. You know, with the Cam Newton stuff and her different takes on first take um, recently. But she talked about Lamar yesterday or the day before, and I happened to see it yesterday. Um, Here's a little bit of what she had to say that I put my in uh, Question why he was here, why he thought he could be a quarterback. Now you have this season, this season, where he's a clear, the clear MVP, and yet people will tell you, nope, Josh Allen should be it. This season, people will bring up, and Doggy and I get into it every Wednesday about Lamar Jackson. People will bring up that he's one and three in the playoffs, yet don't add the context of the fact that Lamar is literally a more improved version of the unanimous MVP pick that we saw in 2019. This is not a guy who has regressed. In fact, his game has gotten better. Every year when, when anonymous executives were like, oh yeah, the league's figured out Lamar Jackson. Have you? It doesn't appear that way. She said he's the clear MVP. <laughs> But people want to add Josh Allen to the, the mix now. That's what has happened lately. 
if we wanted to talk about really adding people to the mix, it was Brock Purdy, it was CMC, it was Tyreek, and Josh Allen's name has come up here lately. And people talk about how many touchdowns Josh Allen has versus how many Lamar has, but they never talk about the turnovers. They never talk about the turnovers. And keeping the ball is an important factor as a quarterback. The more you turn it over, you can have 5,000 passing yards. You throw 25 interceptions, that don't matter. Because look how much we clown Jameis Winston for throwing for 30 touchdowns, but also throwing for 30 interceptions. 30 touchdowns is a lot, but he threw 30 interceptions also. We didn't talk about Jameis for MVP. But let's go on and hear a second part of her comment. And just general, hey, when it comes to QBs, my preference is complete 6'4", stand in the pocket, just throw it. Because of all of those things, I think people discount Lamar at every turn. And I, if people think I'm a Lamar apologist, but no, I'm watching a young man who, despite all the criticism, has risen to the occasion. When he's at, he was asked to do more with less for several years, Baltimore finally gave him weapons, and we're seeing him command this offense, an offense that's suited for his skill set, and he's allowed to flourish. People are still waiting for the uh, 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 but. She said he's an improved version of the 2019 Lamar, which is the one that won unanimous, unanimous MVP. And I think she's 100% correct. Uh, 2019, Lamar was a average to okay passer at best in a high school type offense, and he was voted by everybody that has a vote to be the MVP. The version that you see now here in 2023 season, but the 2024 date is by far a better passer, a smarter passer, a better football player, and still can run the ball as much as he did in, 20, in 2019, but he don't have to because he's improved his game so much more. And people look at his passing yards and see that he rushed for almost 800 yards. And I saw some Houston Texans uh, YouTubers talking about Lamar's still a runner because he got 800 yards. They don't know how them 800 yards came. Those are not design runs. Those are him dropping back. Now there's some design runs. It's him dropping back and people not being open and him making plays. That's what that is. Or he getting blitzed and he breaking out the pocket and making plays. Those are not uh, quarterback counters. Those are not zone reads and some of those are in there but that's not as much as it used to be with greg roman so they just need to get up off that narrative all right our third thing today ronnie stanley was interviewed after practice yesterday and we all know that we need a good version of ronnie stanley to be successful in this postseason run for the 2023 season but date 2024. Uh, he was asked if the rotation was going to happen in the playoff game and ronnie replied he don't know I know it was helpful for him for that rotation to happen so he can get rest and, and not have to go play as many snaps. But he said if it does happen, he go with whatever the coach decides to do. He's cool with it. And it keeps him fresh in the fourth quarter. And if we need a push in the fourth quarter, I would much rather have him in as fresh as possible than to have to go with Makari or better yet, for Lele. So I'm cool with if they decide to do that early in the game to keep Ronnie fresh. And he seems to be cool with it also. He was also asked about Davin Cook. He said Davin Cook still is elusive. He was impressed with his speed, his elusiveness, his ability to um, do what he does at that age. Uh, he's hoping that if he gets a chance to play, he'll add something to the mix. He said he feels there'll be no drop off if Davin Cook has to play, and he's excited to see him uh, get some spin in the game on Saturday. And for the last topic today, Jadavian Clowney. Uh, he was interviewed after practice also. He was asked about how different C.J. Stroud was from week one. He mentioned that he's not playing like a rookie, which a bunch of people have mentioned that. Like, Texas people have, Texans people have mentioned it. Mike McDonald has mentioned it. Uh, and it, it's clear that he's not the same as he was in week one. He's, at one point, was in the MVP talks and uh, didn't throw interception until, like, week seven, eight, nine, somewhere in the middle of the season. So he's clearly progressed from week one. Um, what I like about Clowney was asked about C.J. Stroud getting better, but he also said he got better too because early in the season he was missing tackles and missing sacks, and he said that C.J. Stroud's gotten better. I've gotten better also because I was off the couch too. And speaking of off the couch university, uh, that's where Kyle Van Noy says he came from. 
He said, hopefully the train continues and they continue to get sacks after sacks after sacks after leading the league in sacks, and he hopes to be a part of that number, him and Van Noy both. He ended this interview talking about team camaraderie. And we've mentioned this before on this channel, how this team seems to jail well together. They have a togetherness that transcends off the field. He even mentioned guys hang around after the work is done. Like when practice is over, when meetings is over, that they just don't go home. They hang at the facility and kind of hang with each other and just kick. And that's a good thing to have in team chemistry, man, because team chemistry is one of those things you really can't coach. It has to be like a natural progression. And you can have team bonding activities, but if they don't really rock with each other, they just don't rock with each other. And this team seems to do that tremendously. So um, this is the four things that came across my desk for January 19th, 2024. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. This is Coach Evan with Sip the Films. If you like what you see, hit the like button. If you have not subscribed, please consider doing so. And hit the bell so you'll be notified when the rest of this content drops. Um, we're about 36 hours away <laughs> from that time. Man, I'm so, so, so excited and ready for this game Saturday. And um, Grab a link to this, share it out, you know, help this channel grow, and I'd appreciate it. And I'll see y'all soon, man. It's Coach Evans out.